So we were focusing on attributes a couple of days and we went through this topology. Now what is pending? I have removed BGP from R1 to explain route reflector. The, the need for route reflector here is when route, route 3 provides a route to route 1, route 1 owned with to route 2. Same way, when route 2 learns the route from route 4, and when it gives to router one, router one give or will not give it to router three. It is because of uh, IBGP loop prevention rule. Route learned from an IBGP should not be forwarded to another IBGP. To override this. We used to have full mesh. But the problem with full mesh is more BGB sessions need to be maintained. More BGB session, more updates, more process utilization. So what we do is we go to route one and say, reflect the routes. That solves the problem so that you no need to now have full mesh. You no need to do full mesh because the, uh, the problem is solved. The, the problem is R1 is not giving to R2. And R1 is not giving to R3 that it learned from R2. If I put this command route reflector client, R1 will be forced to provide the updates to R2, those routes that is coming from R3. Likewise, the routes coming from R2 will also be forced to send it to R3. Now, there is no need for full mesh because the route comes now. By default, the route won't be given. By putting the command, we make the route to give. That's all. What is the question? Do you have any question now? See. See. First, we'll do without route reflector, and I'll show you. Router BGP 10, neighbor, let me see. Okay, neighbor is 2.2.2.2, two, 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 two. remote AS is 10, neighbor is 2.2.2.2, two, 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 two. update source will be back zero. Network 100.101, mask. So we have formed one IBGP neighbor. Show IBGP summary. I should see there's only one IBGP neighbor called router two. And I'm learning six prefixes. I have received six prefixes from this router two. What are the prefixes? Show IBGP summary will show you. So these are the prefixes that are coming from various routers. Also, you have the first one, which is local origin. Origin is local. How do I know? The next stop is 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0. And when the next stop is 0, 0, 0, 0, the weightage will be by default given 32768. Next, let's form neighbor with router 3. Router BGP 10, 
neighbor is 3.3.3.3. Remote AS is 10. Neighbor 3.3.3.3. Update search levels here. Now, if you see router 1, you got two neighbors and you are learning two equal number of prefixes. Six prefix learn from router 2, six prefix learn from router 3. All right, now show IPBGP summary. Okay, show IPBGP. It shows that 4.4.4.4 received from router 3, which is coming from autonomous system 30. I want you to match. As I say, you need to match with the picture diagram at the back. I don't have a system 30. is providing you 444. But actually 444 is on autonomous system 20, which is on order 4. So this is the elected route to reach 44444. Going to router two is the router two is the next stop, elected next stop. When you have greater than symbol, which means elected path. What are the other things that you learn from here? This fifty five network is redistributed. Question mark. All right now, even though router three, sorry, router one is learning from even though router one is learning this four 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 from router two, it won't give it to router three. Let's go and check. Number three. Show IP BGP. Number three says, I'm going via router five. See, actually, for router three, going via router two will be the best option. Just only one AS. Just only one AS. Shake, is that true? Yes or no? Router 3 going where router 2 is good or going where router 5 is good to reach 44444. Okay, but why the route is not seen here? Because of special reason. Route learned from R2 should not be given to R3. That's the rule that is preventing R1 giving the route. Same way, if you see, for this 5555 network, R2 can go by R2, sorry, the R2 can go by R3. But if you check on route two's BGP table, it is going by R4, a long route, because there is no route information given by route. And but one is not giving any root information saying you can go where out of three to reach 555. So to override that, what you can do is you can go to router one and say any one of these neighbor as client. You can go to router one and say any one of this client, not both, not necessary to do both. If you do both as a client, it is okay. It will work. Even if you say one neighbor as a client, the other will become a passive client. 
what I'm saying is, if you go to router one and say, router three is a client, whatever router two gave, it will be given to router three. Not only that, whatever router three has given to router one will also be given to router two. Even though router two is not configured as a client, Router 2 is considered as passive file. I'll go to router 1 and say router BGP 10. Neighbor 3.3.3.3 is route reflector client. <laughs> now, if you see, even on router 2, the, the output will vary. Earlier for 5555 it was going via the long route, but now it goes via 3. The long routes are all removed. Goes where the best. Likewise on R3 earlier it was going via long long routes, but now Did you understand the route reflector part? Uh, shake. Okay. I hope uh, you have gone through the previous video where we were speaking about a lot of uh, default behavior and path selection. Today we are going to now configure VRRP on this router. Router 6 and 7. I want this to be in one group. And I want router 8 to use either router 6 or 7. Either router 6 or router 7 for which <clears throat> for which I would like to configure VRRP you need a floating IP address Currently, if you go to router 6, show IP interface brief. You see F00 have got, have got 68.78.0.6. Let's check on router 7. Show IP BGP. Sorry, show IP interface brief. Okay, this router is totally blank. Let us start configuring this and we are going to configure VRRP. First of all, interface F0 slash 0, no shut. IP address 68 dot 78. Zero dot seven. So this is the IP address on F zero zero. Router BGP, sorry. Before the interface F0 slash 1, now shared IP address 57.57.0.7. So I'm going to form an EBGP with the R5. Focus, focus, focus. I'm going to form EBGP on R5. Router BGP 40. 
labor 57.57.0.5 framework AS is 30. I'll go and check on root of 5. Router BGP 30, neighbor 57.57.0.7. Remote AS is 40. So I'm expecting a neighbor to come up now. Show IV BGP summary. I'll come. Hmm. I don't think the interface is configured. Interface f one slash zero. We'll share the IP address fifty seven dot fifty seven dot zero dot five. All right. Uh, you know how I know that because it was there in idle state for a long time. Okay. So we got. Router 7 as a neighbor. But from router 7, you did not love anything. The reason is router 7 is not neighbor with router 8. Router 7 is not neighbor with router 8. I'm going to have router 6 and router 7 in a redundant manner and I want router 7 to be the preferred router for router 5 to come in in order to reach router 8 likewise I want router 8 to go via router 7 in order to reach router 5 and I want router 6 only to be a standby I want router 6 only to be a standby. How can I change this? VLRP. So we are going to have a floating IP address on R6 and R7. Virtual IP address. And that virtual IP address will be used to form neighbor. Let's do that. I'll go to router 6. Interface F0 slash 0. IP VRR. Uh, IP VRRP. No. VRRP IP 68 dot 78 dot Zero one hundred. Okay, group ID should be given VRP one. So this is now going from init state to backup, and soon it will become master. Okay, it shows master. So this is the master. Now, yes. Virtual route redundancy protocol. That is for having the redundant first stop. Meaning, for router eight, there are two next stops. One is going to be active, the other one will be standby. Seven will be active and eight, uh, six will be standby. Usually they do in the land side, but I'm trying between the autonomous system just to check whether anything good thing will turn so that I can use this in production. I've not seen people using in production like this between the autonomous systems. 
usually within the so within the network within the enterprises or within the service provider towards the edge we used to have but here i'm trying to have between ebgp just to check whether anything is uh, anything good can happen with the MED on the other side. MED will be between R5 and 6 and 7. My idea in doing this is, I'll make 7 as an active, means master. And I'll also make 7 as the best increase router if traffic comes from route 5 by setting a MIDI. And in case if router 7 goes down, router 6 will become master in the BRRP side of the network. On the other side, MIDI F01 will have, means on R6 MIDI will have more weightage because 7 has gone down. So there will be a failover using every that's my idea of doing this this is not bgp i i can have a MED on either side router five as well as on routers router eight so i can configure a MED on either side but i'm just trying prp on one side and one side with so on R6, I'm going to say, okay, it is already done. R6, R6 is configured with PRP. Let me configure this on R7. R7 interface F0 slash 0 now R7 will become master and R6 will become backup see it's going there R7 has become master if you go back to R6 earlier it was showing master but now it has turned back it's because the one with the bigger IP address will be the master Router 7's IP address is bigger than router 6. So router 6 is a backup. Router 7 is the master. Fine, I'm going to use this VRLP address to form neighbor from router 8. As of now, show IP BGP summary. I have 68. 7806. I'm going to remove this. Router BGP 50. No neighbor 68.7806. And I'll say neighbor is this VNRP address. VNRP address. Remote AS is remote AS is 40. Likewise, I'll go to router 6. See, I'm just trying only this may not work also. Interface, no, no. Run section the reason why this may not work is usually it will take the exit physical interface address to negotiate not the VR address no neighbor this one uh, <coughs> oh, come on, what's wrong in having this? Mm. 
That's great. So I'm going to put the same command on uh, router 7 before they let me clear. Clear IPBGP start. Let me do hard reset. All right, so on R7 also, I'm going to put the same keeper. Router BGP 40. Show IPBGP summary. Wow, my neighbor ship has come. So the neighbor ship has come only with router 7, it won't come with router 6. So it uses the one thing what we learn from here is what? Okay, yeah. It's not forming neighbor with it, it will not. Why? Because this is not active. This will be active, this will be idle. The reason is R6 is not having the source address which R8 wants to form neighbor. R8 wants to form neighbor with 68.78.0.100. That, that address is not available with router 6. So router 6 is not going to be a gateway for router 8. So if router 1 wants to go to router 8, it will come by router 7. To make sure they come by router 7, we will set a MIDI on router 7. Let's go to router 7 and set MED. Router BGP 40. Neighbor 57.57.0.5. Met uh, default. No. No. Metric is not a command. Okay, then default metric globally. Default metric for this router is 10, and the metric for router 6 will be. Um, is 100. So what I'm expecting is, I'm expecting router 5 to learn routes from router 7, not from router 6. Let's go to router 5. And check. Show IPBGP. Uh, so now I'm not learning anything from router six or seven. Okay, now I uh -oh, I'm not learning any routes so far. No routes come. Let's wait. I'm expecting some routes from. Let's check whether I'm learning it on R7. Show IBBGP. Okay, I'm learning a lot of routes from router 8. But none of them are best. We need to wait some time. Okay, now it has become. 
Okay, now if I go back to router five, I'll have some networks, you see. On router five, I learned five networks, sorry, three networks. From router six, I learned only one network, which is 6.6.6.6. .6 From router six, I learned only one network, which is, okay, the connected network 56. But if you see, eight network, I'm going via router seven, not via six. Likewise, 88 network, I'm going via seven, not via six. If I shut down this port, I'm expecting the failover to happen. Right now, the weightage for seven is 10. I want the weight to be seen here also 10, but not seeing it. This 10 that appears here should also appear here. <coughs> and here. coming only for 444 four, four network. Show IPGP. Uh, metric is zero. And I'll do one thing, I'll just go and configure our R7 route map. Route, first of all, access list. Access list, 10, permit, any. And then I'll say route map. MAD. match ip address 10 if match happens set metric cast 10. right now i'll go under router bgp 40. i remove this default command which i gave earlier instead i say neighbor 57.57.0. .57 <clears throat> Fine. Use the route map. This is the name of the route map. Out. When you send the update out to our five, you need to use the route map. Clear IPBGP. Now, if I go to our five, earlier the metric was zero. I'm expecting 10 now. Wonderful. Just come. So now you can see wherever 7 is, there is 10. On router 6, I would like to <coughs> do the same way. Access list 10 permit any. Route up. MED, you can give any name, okay. I'm just giving some name. Uh, match IP address 10, set a metric 100. Router BGP 40. 
neighbor 56, 56, 56, 0 .0, 0 0.5, use the route map, MIDI 100. I also want to remove the, all the configuration which I gave like default command. Right, clear IP BGP star soft. Now, uh, R5, I'm also learning from R6, only one network, because that is connected to R6. The other networks are only via R7. What I want to check is the failover. Before that, I want to do a ping between R1 to R8. Ping 8.8.8 with a source of 1.1.1.1. The ping is happening. Let me trace the route and show you how the packets are going. Uh, I see, unfortunately, the packet is going via upper path. But I want to test the MED, which is here in the down, MED and VRRP. So I don't want the packet to go via the upper path. I want the packet to come via out of three. What can I do? I can set local preference. Focus. I'm setting local preference. Router BGP. I'm setting local preference overall. So I'm going to say BGP default local preference is 200 for this router. <coughs> Clear IP BGP stars soft. Now let us go to router one and trace the route. First of all, let me ping. The ping is happening. Trace the route. Look at this. It is going via the below path. And it is going via, look at this, three, five, and seventh route, not via six route. Now, what will happen if this link goes down? Let's assume route seven. This link is cut off. Let us cut off that link first. Router 7. Interface F0 slash 0. Shut down. It is cut off. See, in the real world, when you cut off, this green light will go down. It will become amber. All right. So it is cut off. Now let us go and check how the traffic is going. Instead of uh, seven, I'm expecting six there. First, let us ping, the ping is happening. Uh, it has switched over to the upper path. But in some time, the convergence will happen. You know why? Why it has switched to upper path? Still, router 6 might have not formed a neighbor with router 8. It will take some time. Let's go and check router 6. Router 6, now only it has become a master. And now, let's see, show IPBGP summary. Still, it is in idle state. Okay, now it is up. Now, only the BGP has come up. All right? Now, only the BGP has come up. So, if you go to router 1 now, Look at this, it's going where out of six. So there we have seen VRRP working fine. And a MIDI also. Earlier it was 10, now it is all 100. It's going where out of six. Right now it is going where out of six. Actually, VRRP is not a suitable solution between EBGP because you see the convergence was very late. What we could have done is instead of VRRP, we should have formed another neighbor from R6 to R8. Let us do that. I'm removing VRRP from R7. No VRRP one. 
Also, I'm removing from R6. So don't uh, do this VRRP exercise. Just for testing, I did it. Now, let's go and change the IP address on R8. On R8, we did this. We removed this. This is the this is the floating IP address we gave to we gave to VRRP. Instead, I'm going to say two neighbors. One is 68.78.0.6. dot six. Neighbor is forty. Neighbor sixty-eight dot seventy-eight dot zero dot seven. Neighbor is forty. Alright. Okay. That's clear. Clear right the BGP star stuff star. Show my BGP summary. Ping these addresses first. Rib is not accepting this. Okay, the, that interface is down, that I understand. That interface is down. Show red section router BGP sixty six sixty eight dot seventy eight dot zero dot six. Let me bring this interface for a while to check something. No shit. Why this is not? Received from neighbor. Huh. Seven has come up, but six has not come. Why is it like that? Something is wrong with six. Here, oh, okay, it has come up. Maybe some something was wrong with the show. I have a summary now. Okay, now this is what I want. Look, if I trace route from uh, from R1 now, it should go as seven. See, it goes via seven. Why it is not going via six? Because the MED of six is higher that you can see on router 5. You see, you can see both router 6 as well as router 7. Because there is tie in the other attributes, it was going by router 7 because of the lower medium. So don't put VRRP, just simply have EVGP between between router 6 and 8 and 7 and 8. That is enough. In case if something goes wrong with router 7's interface, then the packet will go by router 6, which is the second the biggest MVD. As of now, it is going by router 7. I'm going to shut down 7. You see, the convergence will be faster. It won't take much time. Like when we had VRRP, it took long. All right. Now, if I trace root, it goes via 6. See, it didn't take much time. It didn't go by the upper path. It didn't go by the upper path. So using VRRP is not recommended between EBGP. 
not at all. Only in the land. That is why it is called as first hop redundancy protocol. PRRP is the first hop redundancy protocol. Means you know that's that's your gateway redundancy for the LAN networks to go out. You need gateway. So now it should go as seven. Yeah, it goes by seven because of MED. So one thing we have tested in this topology today is MED. Ignore the VRRP part. Any question? I also set local preference on R3 in order to test MED. So these are the two things that you need to do and see. Simulate the same lab in your home network. In next class, I'm going to use some policy-based uh, load sharing using route maps with local preference with weights. Right, so if you will simulate similar topology and work along with me, then you will get thorough with all the attributes. <coughs> so, route reflector, global configuration of local preference, and then MED. MED, I can figure on six and seven, but the impact was on five. Right? Fine. See you tomorrow.